welcome to another router gods video my name is Humphrey Chung and we're gonna take a look at how to count in binary this is one of the beginning steps that you take when you get into networking when you're starting in the networking field but before we actually start counting in binary and converting binary to decimal we have to actually re-examine how we count in decimal so from 0 to 10 and beyond and the reason we need to do that is you've been counting in decimal uh, form since you were younger, but uh, since you've been using it so much, you don't really know how the rules work. So we're going to revisit that a little bit. So I'm going to change my pen color here. Let's make it red. So we're going to say on the right side of our board here, we're going to call this the decimal stuff. And when you count in decimal, it's pretty easy, right? You start at 0, 1, 2, 3, and you keep going until you hit 9. Okay, so that's, you know, duh, right? But when you hit 9, what exactly happens? Well, up until 9, what you were dealing with was a single digit, just one single number. So we have a 0, we have a 1, 9 was a single digit. When you want to go abo above 9, obviously that's 10. But what is 10? 10 is actually two digits. Okay, so we can sort of think here that we have a box, and in this box, only a single digit can be placed there. So when you get to 10, it goes from one box right here to two boxes. Okay, so we keep going. If we keep going after that, we've got 11, we've got 12, so on and so forth, and then we get to the number 99. 99 here, just remember that we've got two boxes here. We need to get to number 100, and sort of it works the same way. We have to go from two boxes here, two digits, and we have to transform into three boxes, three spaces. So now our number starts looking like this. We've got to fill in three boxes worth of stuff, and that's going to be 100. Zero, zero and that's a hundred okay now in binary it works very similar we start counting at zero and then we go to one zero and one we do the same thing we have a box here and a box here we can only fit one digit there okay now in binary we only have zeros and ones that's it so when we hit one and we want to go past one we have to add another box so the way it goes is this with 0, 0 is simply 0, and 1 is simply 1, okay? So we're going to make a decimal representation here. 0 is equal to the decimal of 0. 1 in binary is equal to the decimal of 1, okay? So far, so good. But now in decimal, let's say we want to hit the number 2. How do we do that? Well, we've run out of boxes here. So this is a single box, this is a single box. We need to now use two spaces, two digits to do this. Okay, so what do we do? Well, if you go back here to where we had 9, and then 9 became 10, what exactly happened? Well, if you look at this second box here, this second box before was a 0. And what we've done is we've just taken that 0 and we've added a 1 to it. And then on the second box here, we've made it a 0 because we're just starting off. So we've turned this second box into a 1. We've added a number there. And then we started all over in the second spot. So with binary, it's the same thing. In the second spot here, we're starting over. So it's a 0. And in the second spot, we are now putting a 1 there. So 1, 0 is equal to a 2 in decimal. Okay, let's see what we need to do if we want to make a 3 in decimal. So to make a 3, same sort of principle. We're only dealing with two spots here. And all we have to do is put a 1 there. So we've got a 1 here, that stays the same. We add a 1 there, and now we have 3. Two ones in binary is equal to a 3. Now you're probably thinking, okay, that sounds pretty good, but what if I want to make a 4 in binary, 4? 
Well, to get a foreign binary, we need to add another box, another digit. So here, because we only have in binary ones and zeros, we don't have any other numbers, we have sort of hit the limit in terms of what we can put in these boxes or these digits. So now we need to go to three lines, three digits. And as you can guess, as you could, you could probably think phantomly, we've got a zero here, just sort of as a placeholder. So all we're going to do is we're going to turn this zero into a one and everything else zeros out. We're starting over. So a one zero zero in binary is equal to a four. Now you probably noticed a pattern here and the pattern is this. When we had two, two is a one there and there's a zero. Now four, four is twice as large as two. We've gone one extra digit, there's a one there and everything else is zeros. If we keep with the pattern, let's say we want to double four again. So if we double four, that gives us an eight. Eight looks like four spots. And the fourth spot is filled with the one and everything else is a zero. It's pretty cool. Now if we keep doubling, so one, zero, 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 that's going to be equal to 16. If you put one followed by five zeros, that's going to be equal to 32. If you put one followed by six zeros, that's going to be equal to 64. And then finally, you'll be ending up with 128. So that's pretty easy in terms of binary, beginning binary to decimal conversions. You just have to practice it a lot to sort of get it down to second nature. Now, what happens a lot of times when you start playing around with binary and decimal stuff and problems that Cisco gives you is that they're going to give you a binary number out of the blue and it's going to have eight digits. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And they're going to tell you something like take this binary number and convert it to decimal. And I'm just going to make something up. Let's say one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. Okay, probably the most complicated binary number uh, that you can get with eight bits there. So how would you figure this out? How would you decide? How would you count this in decimal? You know, what would be the decimal representation? Well, there's a hard way and there is a easy way of doing this. Okay, the hard way is you could actually do the whole two to the fourth power, two to the sixth power, and do all that uh, ugly math stuff, which yeah, you know, might take you a long time when you're taking the test. Or if you've memorized a very easy table, you could pretty much do this instantly. And what this table is this. Let me just move my screen down a little bit. This is one of the tables you probably should remember when you're dealing with binary stuff. So this table starts with the number 128. Then we cut that in half and we get 64. We cut that in half and we get 32. And if we keep going, we get 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. These are eight spots, eight numbers to this. And really for this table, all you have to remember is you take that number and keep cutting it in half until you can't cut in half anymore. So take this table, 128, 64, 32, 16, all that good stuff. And all you have to do now is take the number that has a one by it. So in this first spot, you've got a one. So just put a one right here. And in the third spot, we've got a one. So we skip this one and we put a one right there. Then here, we've got a one right there. So we're going to put a one there. And then we've got a one right there. Alternatively, what you could have done is instead of putting ones, you could have just simply done this, circled the spots that have the one, something like that. And then it becomes a simple addition problem. Okay. Now, I find it easier to add the numbers on the bottom first. So 8 plus 2 is 10. These two numbers become 10. 
These two numbers become 130 and 160. 160 plus 10 is equal to 170. Something pretty easy to do. You're just turning a multiplication problem into a simple addition problem. Don't worry if you can't add that fast. It just comes with practice. I find it easier just add the low numbers first and then add the high numbers after that and just keep adding them together to get the final result. Now another way that Cisco could throw a problem at you is they could give you a decimal number. So we'll just make something out of the blue here. Let's say 96. Okay, so 96. And they want you to figure out what the binary equivalent of 96. Okay. Now, once again, you could bust out with your special chart here. 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. And incidentally, what you might want to do when you start the test, if you're taking your CCNA, you're going to get either a piece of paper or a plastic sheet. The first thing you should do is copy this chart down on that sheet of paper or that plastic sheet just to save yourself some time. Okay, how should we figure this out? Well, you know, can you put 128 into 96? No, you can't because 128 is too large. It can't go into 96. Can you put 64 into 96? Well, you certainly can. So what we're going to do is we're going to circle that. And then we're going to take 96 minus 64 and we get 32. Oh, okay. That's what we're left with. Can 32, you're going to now just keep going down the list. 32 can go into 32 exactly once. And what's going to happen is it's going to zero it out. When we do the subtra subtraction, nothing's left. And then so we don't have to worry about any of that. So the way this is going to look is this is zero. This 64 went into 96, so that's a 1. 32 went into 32, so that's a 1. And everything else is zero, which is pretty cool. Now, another way you could have done this, instead of drawing this from top to bottom, some people like drawing it from left to right. It works exactly the same way. I, for some reason, like drawing it from top down, but you may want to draw it from left to right. In this case, if you drew it from left to right, it would simply look like this. And all zeros after that. All right, so that was a quick and easy introduction to how to count in binary, convert into decimal, and how to take decimal numbers and convert them into binary. The main thing to remember here is after you understand how this math works, simply draw yourself out a chart 128 and just keep cutting it in half. Write that down on your whiteboard or a sheet of paper and then all of this becomes very simple and very quick. Thanks for watching.